Hi guys, my name is Colin and this is Colin Talks Crypto. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about why I just sold 20% of my total Luna holdings for Ethereum. And no, it's not because I'm bearish on Luna. Thank you for joining me. Hey guys, if you've been following me for a while, you know that about a year ago, or maybe even a little bit less than a year ago, I acquired a position in Luna. And at the time, it wasn't a huge position. It was probably, I don't know, 10 or 15% of my total portfolio. But as Luna has exploded in price, so has its percentage in my total portfolio holdings to the point where it became like 60% of my entire portfolio. And it's continued to climb and it's continued to climb and it's performing amazingly. And so what I've done recently is I've actually just sold a 20% position of my Luna. Now, like I said, it's not because I'm bearish in any shape or form whatsoever about Luna. In fact, I'm incredibly bullish about Luna. So then why did I do it? So let's take a look. I'm going to throw a chart on the screen here. This is Luna as priced in Ethereum. This is not Luna priced in dollars. This is Luna as priced in Ethereum. And the reason I take a look at this chart is because that is the asset I purchased Luna in. So it makes sense to price it accordingly. Now, the thing that's interesting to see where I purchased it versus where I sold it is that is a 14.3x gain on my original investment as priced in Ethereum. And I just took a look at things and I've learned a hard lesson that if you don't take profits, you can get burned extremely badly. I learned this on my uh, Bitcoin mining stock call options. I learned this on EOS. I learned this um, on Bitcoin Cash, although my position on that wasn't very big. But if you go heavy in one thing and you lose it all, that has to be an outcome that you can handle as an investor. And to give you an example, if you went 100% into one asset and that asset failed for whatever reason, you'd be out of dry powder, you'd be out of resources. And if it puts you out of the investor game, then it doesn't make sense because you can't come back to try again. And so uh, one post I made recently on Twitter was basically never go all in, never go 100%. And of course, there are some of you who have gone 100% in one thing. And there are different circumstances, absolutely. Like if you're young versus you're old, you know, when you're young, you can afford to make more mistakes and you have a longer uh, time span in front of you to recover versus when you're old. Usually when you're older, it's more about preserving wealth. So there are definitely different factors involved here, as well as portfolio size. There's a difference between having a portfolio of $1,000 versus having a portfolio of $1 million. There's different risks that you may wanna take. You could have a different risk appetite with a $1 million portfolio. You might be a little more conservative versus a $1,000 portfolio, let alone a $10 million portfolio. You know, it can go all over the place. And that's relative to your net worth, that's relative to your ability to earn. So there are many, many factors that you have to take into account when making and placing a bet size. Basically, we're talking about bet size. How big of a bet do you place when investing? So let's back up here. So back to Luna. I purchased about 15% of my portfolio in Luna and I bought it with Ethereum. I watched it 14.3x to this moment in time right now. It has 14.3x. And so I thought to myself, you know, I don't think anything's happening to Luna. I think except for maybe going up more, I think it's gonna to continue to skyrocket, but that's a very, very healthy gain. That's a type of gain that I cannot pass by. I cannot let that go. And so I took a look at it and I realized that if I sold just a small percentage of my Luna, I'd actually recoup my entire Ethereum cost basis and still have a boatload of Luna left over. And so actually what I've done is I've sold 20% of my Luna and I've made back 2.5 times my original Ethereum investment. So I'm up. Now I'm playing with house money and the Luna slice of my crypto portfolio is still above 50%. So I'm still heavily, heavily invested in Luna, which is an amazing crypto and I have very strong faith in it. But like I said earlier, 
never go all in on something and never go in so heavy that you feel uncomfortable or maybe you couldn't sleep easy at night. And so now I feel really good knowing that I have not only made a profit on my original Ethereum because I've got 2.5x the original Ethereum I put into Luna, but I've also got over 50% of my portfolio free Luna house money. So in the worst case scenario, if Luna goes to zero, which I don't think it will, but you never think it will until it happens, I'll be okay because I still made a profit on this entire trade. And that's basically why I did it. I'm protecting myself, I'm diversifying, and I'm planning for worst case scenarios because there are a lot of unknowns. There's unknowns in Ethereum, there's unknowns in Luna, there's unknowns in both. Ethereum is transitioning to a proof of stake system with the merge happening very soon. There's tons of opportunity for something to go wrong in that, no matter how perfectly they've tested it. And I think it will go fine, and I think it will be fine, but you don't know for sure. And for Luna, Luna's largest use case is UST, the stable token, by design as a DeFi stable token that is truly decentralized, and it is brilliant, and I love it. And I earn 20% with the anchor earn feature. But what if something was to happen to Luna? I do know that UST is being funded externally. And just like a month or two ago, Do Kwon dropped another half a billion dollars into the UST reserves so that it could basically continue to pay out this 20% industry number one rate on your dollars, which is amazing. And that's an incredible marketing gimmick. You know, if you can get 20% on your USD in the form of UST on Anchor's Earn uh, protocol, I mean, who's not gonna do that? I'm doing that even. And the thing is, is though, what if that runs out? And there's propositions that are already in play to reduce that rate and to make it, you know, drop no more than 1.5% or gain more than 1.5% per month, but to keep in line with the amount of reserves that are available to pay out. And so that's a change to the system design and that's a change that introduces risk. Any change introduces risk. So Ethereum is introducing change by migrating to a proof of stake system that introduces risk. Luna's UST is introducing some change with its UST payment mechanism that introduces some risk. Both I think are incredibly strong assets, but I just feel like I can sleep a little easier at night having reduced my Luna position from like 60% to 50% and increased my Ethereum position from like 30% to 40%, roughly speaking. That's basically what I've done and that's why. So I still am extremely bullish. I think we're gonna see tremendous, tremendous growth from the Luna token itself and the UST adoption in the months to come. I think that even if the UST rate does go down, I think that it will continue to be very appealing because I think the goal is to keep the interest rate the APR that you can earn from your UST above the industry average. So it will still be appealing, but it might not be quite as tantalizing as the crazy insane 20% APR that UST currently experiences. And so I just wanna be ready no matter what happens. I feel really good about having secured some of my profits. In fact, all of my cost basis. And I'm fully aware that it is incredibly possible maybe even likely that Luna outpaces Ethereum even further. And you could say, well, you would have made more Colin if you had just kept your Luna even longer. But to me, there's a point where taking profits is important. And I think 14X is appropriate for doing that with just 20% of my Luna. If it makes me sleep easier at night, then I think that that's worth it. One point that I think is in favor of Luna growing faster than Ethereum is in terms of market caps. If you look at the Luna market cap versus the Ethereum market cap, Luna can, I think like 10X its market cap before it even equals the Ethereum market cap. I just looked at this today, this could be wrong, but I think Luna was like $40 billion market cap and Ethereum was like $400 billion market cap. And so with that kind of small market cap relative to the king, you know, number two crypto, Ethereum, the number one smart contract crypto, I think that Luna with its very inexpensive gas fees, its very fast block times, both of which are better than Ethereum, its proof of stake already, which is amazing, and Ethereum is just trying to get to that level. I think that those are factors for why Luna could continue to outpace Ethereum in terms of its price and its market cap. Luna's 
10 times smaller market cap does give it a lot of room to grow. But I know that Ethereum has been around for a lot longer than Luna, so it has that longevity, that stability. One other key reason for why I am selling some of my Luna for Ethereum is I do think that there is a chance that because of the merge for Ethereum, this proof of stake migration, assuming it's a success, which I do think it will be given all its testing, I think that we could see a huge run up for Ethereum. Um, if you look at the price charts of Ethereum versus the charts for Luna, there's a big difference. Luna has recently seen a tremendous run up. Ethereum has seen a run up kind of like a couple years ago and then a correction and not really another run up. So for me, it's a way of selling high on Luna and buying kind of low for Ethereum right before a potential momentous event, which is the merge. So that's another factor for why I am doing this. That's the timing of it all. There's this event happening for Ethereum and also the inverse correlation of the Luna price chart being really high and the Ethereum not really having seen a run up recently. And so I'm hoping to flip those profits into Ethereum and make them into even more profits during Ethereum's hopeful rise very soon. So now I've got my eggs across multiple baskets and that's my example to you of taking profits. It's actually a form of taking profits. Even though I didn't take it into dollars, I didn't buy Luna with dollars. I bought it with Ethereum. And my goal is to accumulate crypto. It's to multiply my crypto portfolio, not to accumulate dollars. So for me, if I can 2.5x my Ethereum stash and have some free Luna on the side, which happens to be like half of my entire portfolio, I'm more than happy to take those gains to diversify and to basically have locked them in. This is not financial advice. Like I said, Luna could skyrocket to $500 and Ethereum could stagnate. Or Ethereum could go to $20,000 and Luna could stagnate at some point. But do your own due diligence, make your own educated decisions. And I just wanted to share this real life example with you of me taking profits and how I price things in the asset that I actually purchased them in. I wish you all the best of luck and I continue to feel very excited about this cryptocurrency bull run. We haven't left it for one minute. And you know what's interesting is I think we're gonna look back in a year from now after we've done a huge parabolic move for Bitcoin and especially these altcoins like Luna and Ethereum and the bear market that a lot of people claim that we have been seeing for the past year is not gonna look like a bear market. It's gonna look like in 2013 when we went sideways for a little bit and then it's just part of a bigger move. I think that this bear market is gonna, in the future, not even be called a bear market. It's gonna be called a sub peak, which is what I actually think it is. For those of you who think I'm crazy and think that we already saw the top and we are going down from here and it's a bear market, I urge you to look at the altcoin prices as evidence of why it has not been the final peak. Anytime the bull run is over and we actually are collapsing, altcoins do not make new all-time highs. So then how could Luna be making a new all-time high right now and some of these other cryptocurrencies be making new all-time highs if we're in a bear market? It's because we're not in a bear market. We're in the middle of a correction of a massive, massive run up for Bitcoin, where it's going to end up in six figures easily. So that's my thesis. It continues to be the case to this day. And that's where CBBI, the Column Talks Crypto Bitcoin Bull Run Index, comes in useful. That's at CBBI.info if you didn't know. But basically the reason that the CBBI is so useful is because it's not like any of these other indexes or metrics. Many of these other indexes and metrics indicate sub peaks. Almost every one of them that I've seen. The CBBI is the only one that is designed only to indicate a blow off top and not to falsely indicate a sub peak. And that is what separates it from the rest. So that's what I'm going to be keeping my eye on. If the CBBI goes above the previous all time high of the last few years, I think it was like 70 or 75 that's when you start to like pay attention and maybe start taking profits. I might wait as high as 80 or even 90 to start taking profits. But if it hits that range, you know that we are in the profit taking zone. All right, guys, I hope you're doing fantastic. Take care and I'll talk to you again soon.